Hey everybody, Jason Boone here from PremiumBeat.com. Today I'm going to teach you all the cool things you can do with this little new item button in Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get started. Hey everybody, Jason Boone here from PremiumBeat.com. Today I'm going to teach you all the cool things you can do with this little new item button in Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get started. Now you can find the new item button in the lower right hand corner of the project panel. Now if we click on it, you can see there's quite a f list of items here. There's actually 11 in total. Now I'm going to go through these one at a time so you can see what you can do with each of these items. So let's get started here. The first one is sequence. Now this is obviously an important thing in Premiere Pro. So you can see the new sequence dialog box comes up here. What you can do here is you can create a new sequence based off of any of these presets or you can customize the settings and then even create uh, your own preset which you can reuse in the future. You can customize video and audio settings. You can even specify your track configuration. So let's go ahead and create a new sequence here. And we're going to call it the keyboard documentary. Fascinating film. So we'll click OK. And you see we've got our sequence here. So now let's see what we can create next. Next is an offline file. And I must admit, I've never used this. Um, but what it's for is if you want to create like a placeholder in your sequence. Let's say you're making a film with an effect shot or an animation shot that you haven't completed yet, but the rest of the film is completed. You could create an offline file um, to, as, to, again, to serve as a placeholder. And once you're finished with that shot, you can swap it out or link it up with this offline file. Next up is adjustment layer. An adjustment layer is simply what it sounds like. It's a layer which you can add effects to and change video. Just like if you've ever worked in After Effects, adjustment layers play a big role. So let me show you really quickly what we can do. I've got a video clip here of a keyboard for our keyboard documentary, which is going to be just a thrilling, nonstop, action pack, uh, action packed thrill ride. Okay, here we go. So we've got our adjustment layer here, the rose colored file. We're going to add, uh, let's add a brightness and contrast here. So I'm dropping it in on our adjustment layer. Go to effect okay. controls. And then you can see here if I make adjustments to the adjustment layer, it changes our video file underneath. Next, we have our title. Now, if you click on title, it's going to launch the new title dialog box. And we're going to create a, a title for our keyboard documentary. And you see here in the new title dialog box, we have just a ton of different options to create graphical elements, anything from simple text to uh, shapes and uh, all kinds of different things. You can make adjustments to all your title properties here. So let's create the title of our film and um, make it pretty big here. Again, a ton of different options here. You could create um, shapes. Let's create a just a, a, a terrible looking graphic here. Whoops. This is just awful. So let's send this to the back. So yeah. Oh yeah, this looks just great. This is going to be a great film. You can see I'm using the align and center tools here. And there you go. Wham, bam. The best, best graphic in the world right here. And then we'll drag this in over here. So yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of, options there with uh, with a new title dialog box here. Next up is bars and tone. So if you're working in the broadcast realm, bars and tone are very important. If you're sending off a finished video, um, you have video engineers which need to look at your video and audio signals, make sure everything's calibrated properly, and uh, make sure their equipment is calibrated properly. So if you add a bars and tone at the beginning of your clip here, um, then your engineers will be happy. 
Okay, so next up is black video. Now, again, in the broadcast world, I use black video to fill in gaps. Uh, also create, like, you can do a quick dip to black transition. I know there's a dip to black transition in the effects, but if you want to do a down and dirty one, like, I could just drag this black file here, or black video file here, and it treats the black video as a still image. If you look up here, it says still image. But now if I were to grab this and and do a quick little command D shortcut to add transitions, you'll see it's going to, and I have it here, watch what happens. It's a little dip to black transition. Also, again, use it to fill in gaps, and as I said before in the broadcast realm, I would use this. I would have to put in five frames of black video at the head and tail of my productions so when I would send it off for broadcast. So let's do that. Can grab quick five frames. There we go. The beginning, at the end, this thing is broadcast ready. So next up is captions. We have captions here. The new version of Adobe Premiere Pro 2017 has uh, just a ton of options with the new caption feature. You can create open or closed captions, and the difference being closed captions, the viewer has the option to turn them off whenever they want. Open captions are burned into your video. So I, I don't want to go into a lot of depth here. I have another tutorial on Premium Beat if you search for it, um, all about how to create your, your open captions or closed captions or whatever you want. Really, really great um, uh, options here. Next up is the color mat. Now color mat, a lot like black video, it treats it as a still image, but you can simply select whatever color you want and you can change it at any point just by selecting it. Now this is good for graphics. Say I didn't want to create that graphic within the title designer, the blue background, I could create it here as a color mat. Um, I can also use this um, as, a, as a color for the background of different videos if I'm doing some kind of transition. Next up, universal counting leader. So again, if we're working in the broadcast realm, we can create a quick counting leader setup. So we can create that, drop that right into here after our bars and tone to give our engineer or our master control operator a quick heads up. And a, as you can see, they'll know when to cut this video in. And last but not least is transparent video. You can use transparent video when you're using an effect that creates an image that preserves transparency. So I know that sounds a little confusing, so let me just show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna create a new transparent video file. And let's say I wanna add time code. So I could grab this transparent video and I wanna do time code, but I don't wanna put time code on every single clip. So we could drag this here. So this is our transparent video file. Let's grab our time code effect, drop it on our transparent video, and boom, we've got our time code over the whole sequence here. So our super amazing keyboard documentary is ready for broadcast. We've used all these new items to prep this thing, and we, we've used different assets for different purposes, so now we're ready to rock. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial be sure to check out Premium Beat for high quality royalty free music and sound effects for all of your media and video projects.